Jenna Butler, PhD candidate, computer science, simulating a silent killer. It's called The Silent Killer. With a 5% survival rate and a three to six month survival time after diagnosis, it's one of the deadliest forms of cancer. It's undetectable, untreatable, and unsympathetic. Steve Jobs, Patrick Swayze, my mom. When my mother died of pancreatic cancer at the age of 48, I knew I wanted to spend my life studying her killer. And after some research, I learned of cancer's most common murder weapon, our own blood system. You see, most of the cells in our body are not actually on a direct supply of blood but rather get what they need to survive, oxygen and nutrients, via diffusion, meaning that these molecules drift from areas of high concentration where our blood is to the areas of low concentration where our cells are. You can think of it like the Jenny Craig weight loss system. Every day, just the right amount of food you need arrives to your home. But then what happens if all your friends come over? Well, suddenly there's not enough food to go around. And this is what happens when a tumor begins to grow. You have a small group of cells that mutate and rapidly divide, creating a large mass of cells where normally the body is used to just a few. And it begins to die when diffusion can't sustain it. Now this sounds like great news. You have a tumor, it gets to one to two millimeters, and it begins to die. But when it does so, it sends these little SOS signals into our body. And your body responds. Your own blood vessels will actually begin to grow towards the tumor, eventually infusing it with a direct supply of blood, nutrients, and a means to spread anywhere in your body. It's like the Jenny Craig factory moves into your house. What I want to do is study this process, which is called angiogenesis. And normally, it just occurs during wound healing and when a baby is being created. So doctors thought that if they gave anti-angiogenesis drugs, they could stop your body from responding to these signals. But the drugs didn't work. Patients still died. Now, while you didn't give it new vasculature and the tumor began to die, a few strong cells would survive, break off to new parts of the body, find blood, and continue to ravage. So cutting off the response isn't the answer. I want to know what causes this switch from the small, safe tumor to this deadly spreading mass. And in order to answer this question, I've developed a computer simulation of cancer, which you can see in images one through six on my slide. This is like the ultimate microscope. You can zoom in, zoom out, pause, rewind, fast forward, watch cancer grow. It is my hope that by doing this, I can figure out what causes that switch from a small, safe mass to this deadly killer and silence it before it silences another. Thank you.